Item hash, SCP-7565. Object class, uncontained. Special containment procedures, efforts are to be centered upon the capture of an SCP-7565 instance, either dead or alive, to allow for further studies of the species. Until this is achieved, reported sightings of the anomaly are to be considered the main instrument of research and investigation. Description, SCP-7565 is a species of late surviving sauropodal dinosaur that inhabits the marshes and waterways of Central Africa. Known by the local population as Mokumbum 1 sightings of the anomaly have taken place since the late 19th century, typically by the hand of European explorers in the region, despite the multitude of sightings, the difficult terrain, remote location of its habitat and the large size and aggressive disposition of the animal has prevented any specimen, either dead or alive, from being captured. The anomaly has universally been described as large, often compared to the size of an adult bush elephant, Loxodonta africana. The height of SCP-7565 instances is thick, scaleless and soft to the touch, while the neck is long and serpentine. Furthermore, the tail is heavily muscular, able to perform powerful movements in the water. Many of the aforementioned adaptations are unique to SCP-7565, and aren't found on previous members of Sauropoda, Saurischia or Dinosauria, and might be the result of its unique lifestyle. SCP-7565's main difference from other sauropod dinosaurs is its semi-aquatic lifestyle, as reported through many reliable sources in the early and mid-20th century. These primarily European reports have all noted how SCP-7565 instances spend most of the day resting within the lakes, rivers or ponds from whence it grazes upon underwater vegetation or grass. This herbivorous diet was complemented by occasional meat, as many of the earliest reports noted it to consider small mammals, including Homo sapiens, to be prey. It is believed that the population has remained low since its discovery, any substantial population of large animals requires high quantities of calories to sustain itself. As such, the presence of a large population of SCP-7565 would be immediately noticeable through its impact on the rest of the Congolese ecosystem. Addendum 7565.1, History of Discovery Reports of large reptilian creatures living in the African interior have taken place for centuries. These initial sightings have mostly been dismissed due to the presence of fantastical elements, the allegorical nature of the tales, and multiple internal contradictions. As such, the first sighting to be officially classified as an SCP-7565 instance took place in British Bakwanaland in summer 1887, by British officer Albert Moss, in a letter sent to the Zoological Society of London. The document is attached below. Letter of Captain Moss to the Zoological Society of London the response of the previously attached letter was warm, with the Zoological Society dedicating many funds to the capture of the described creature. While many further expeditions into the Africa interior would be undertaken, resulting in the discovery and description of dozens of new species, no further evidence of the creature beyond occasional sightings was discovered, with the SCP-7565 instances being sighted further north from the Zambesi as the British control of the region likewise advanced north. While occasional mentions of other reptilian organisms similar to Captain Moss's description took place over the next years, they typically lacked details over the characteristics of the animal or the location of the sighting, being useless for the further studies of the anomaly. This trend would be broken in 1898 by Bernard Fasser, in his Africanist Zoology, which described SCP-7565 thus. Where the Luolaba and Luluva rivers met, the Congo Basin becomes a series of deep marshes that reaches as far as Rhodesia. The greatest fauna here is not a hippopotamus nor a rhinoceros, but a large reptile unknown elsewhere in Africa, the pygmies of the forest tell of its immense strength, resilient hide and temperamental behavior claiming it to be some kind of mixture of elephant and dragon, unlikely to be any type of crocodile or lizard, it seems to me to be one of the great sauropods of old. Fitting for a continent frozen in time. This report brought the Foundation's attention upon the region, showing interest in further research on the anomaly, which was classified as SCP-7565 in the following months. The first full-scale Foundation expedition into the Congo Basin took place on June 1901, 
working alongside the German Kpa.3 with further ones being undertaken in the following years, all failing on the primary objective of capturing SCP-7565. Expedition Timeline Summary of Events Notes the 3rd of June the 5th of November 1901 initial incursion into the Congo basin was delayed by non-cooperative authorities from the Free State. Four upon finally entering the territory the European explorers contracted as guides managed to lead the combined forces of the Foundation and Kpa towards recently discovered Katanga a particularly heavy raining season and multiple malaria outbreaks forced it to return home before any discovery was made no sightings of SCP-7565 took place the 12th of January, 1903 The 2nd of February, 1905 Three Belgian guides were hired for the mission. The area surrounding Lake Maru was reached quickly, just a few weeks into the expedition, and from it multiple exploration teams would originate. Despite initial success, the aggressive fauna of the region was a constant issue, with many expedition members being greatly injured by constant attacks of leopards and crocodiles. The death of the lead researcher and two of the hired guides by a thaumaturgical accident put a final nail in the coffin of the expedition, with most of its members returning to sites under Foundation Control Cave paintings interpreted as depicting SCP-7565 were discovered. A way was established during the mission's duration, and would be employed for the next three expeditions. The 5th of May the 7th of June, 1906 the expedition had to retreat soon after starting. Native peoples near Lake Bangwulu became hostile after the British guide, fluent in TWA and Lingala, threatened them with murder, slavery and cannibalism. In the attempt to flee, the guide would get lost and died of dehydration. His soul would later be contacted by a Foundation spiritist, and he would claim this whole incident was just an accident. No sightings of SCP-7565 took place as the expedition members were too occupied fleeing the area. The 23rd of September, 1906 The 11th of March, 1907 Cordial relationships were re-established with the local populace. Exploration took place in areas of known para-ecological significance. The expedition would eventually return as the supplies lowered below the designated safety threshold. Many of the expedition members mentioned seeing SCP-7565, though the local population seemed unwilling to share information related to the anomaly. The 16th of November, 1907 March, 1909 A repeat of the aims of the previous expedition with heightened supplies and the help of a multinational team of guides. There was a high attrition rate as a result of diseases. Sightings of SCP-7565 were recorded, as were of agents belonging to the Kpa and the estate Noi. SCP-7565 was described with many differences, many claimed SCP-7565 possessed a single large horn and an armored skin, while other sightings claimed the anomaly to have upright plaques along its back. The 23rd of September, 1910 March, 1914 The area encompassing the space from Lake Kivu to the Lualaba River was subject of frequent patrols during the expedition's four years, the harsh weather and terrain made progress slow. While many expedition members would claim to have seen SCP-7565 none managed to locate remains belonging to it, or were able to capture the anomaly. Despite the failure to locate SCP-7565, many relevant mineral sources were discovered, they are now under Foundation ownership. No further expedition would take place for the following 30 years, as a result of both world wars and recovery from the Great Depression. The most noticeable development on SCP-7565's research would come from outside the veil, with German Captain Ludwig Freiherr von Stein Zulorsnitz describing a large sauropod inhabiting the jungles of Cameroon where he was positioned at, and mentioning Mokumbam as being the name for SCP-7565. Following the war's end, the number and funding of Foundation-led expeditions in the Congo Basin significantly decreased due to the consistent failures of obtaining remains of SCP-7565 or the capture of a live specimen. As of 1978 this trend has been maintained. Update, 10 January, 1985 Starting in the mid-1980s, a change in the policy of SCP-7565 resulted in the interviewing of many native guides who had in the past claimed to know SCP-7565's location or whose clients have claimed to see the anomaly. 
as many share similar details, only the most relevant of them has been transcribed below. Non-relevant data has been removed. Begin log. I was some day around 1954 when I first heard of the Mokulmbam. I was 16 at the time, I knew my ways around the nearby forests as I was working as a guide and suddenly one day work presented itself without announcement. One summer morning a small river boat came to our modest town, with ten strangers packed like sardines in it. The strangers weren't anything that our town hadn't seen before, a group of nine whites and a native guide trying to explore the continent's interior. My parents told me those folks used to be very common before the war in Europe. Only one thing's made them strange, their objective, the Mokulmbam dot. The reason it was strange was simple, we had never heard of the Mokulmbam before. As much as the whites insisted it was a local myth, that wasn't the case, not the adults nor the elderly had ever heard of such a thing. Even the name was nonsense, I don't know if it means anything somewhere but for sure it didn't mean one who stops the flow of rivers here. The descriptions they gave of the animal were of little use too, not resembling any single thing from here. Still, they were constantly asking practically demanding that we'd guide them where it lived, and that we gave them more information about the creature. Sooner rather than later I stepped up as a guide, both to make them shut up, get out and hoping to get some easy money. No I wasn't really worried about finding anything, were a monster to truly live here we would have been the first to know, not them. It is stupid to think otherwise. I didn't had a reason to worry about any real predators or other aggressive animal either, as our town's hunters were very active this time of the year and were sure to drive them out. The place I took them was a small waterfall north of our village, typically it would only take half a day to arrive it, but their lack of experience navigating the muddy marshes made it take the entire day. By the end of it they were so tired that they had forgotten their initial objective and only wished to go back to town. I advised against it, as it was already late night, and for once they listened. Once we finally started going back the next morning, I asked them more about the Mokulmbam. I was actually very curious about what the creature they were looking for was. Rather than describing it for the hundredth time one of the whites snaked a tree branch and drew a silhouette on the muddy ground, and then I finally realized what it was. A Brontosaurus. I remembered them from some old comics my father had brought to town years ago. They didn't live here though, that much I could tell you. Yes, I'm pretty sure of that. Afterwards. Well once we arrived at town they didn't take long to leave downstream, at least they paid well, they weren't cheap unlike some of those that came after. If you meant what happened after that day, it is simple. They, whites, just kept on coming. Became almost a yearly event. Some rich white missionaries or wannabe explorers arrived to our town, and asked for guides, supplies and whatever else they though needed to go further into the woodlands and find Mokulmbam. The second time this happened we were still wondering what exactly they wanted, by the third we had already an entire industry set up. Whenever they came we chose some of our town's folk to be their guide, who would send them through a safe path on the forest, with enough scenery to liven up their imagination and allow for sights of the creature. A big part of this whole process was storytelling, either designed months in advance or made up on the spot, the guides would tell the whites stories from made-up ancestors and their fights with the monster made up by the European. While these stories varied depending on who told them, the main factor on deciding the story to tell was the reaction of our visitors, some wanted to hear that Mokulmbam was a slow slumbering herbivore that could only live in the water, others about a dangerous creature that had and will kill man if given the chance. For all kinds of peoples there was a suitable tale, and these were refined over the years of visits. It wasn't really a scam, or at least I wouldn't think of it that way. They asked to see something that didn't exist, so we showed them what did, when we tried to explain some the truth, they all refused to listen. Besides, they don't come to see and learn of anything from Africa, they only want to see something in Africa. Have you been listening to anything I told you? No Mokulmbam isn't real, never was, I don't know where the idea came from but not from us. In this town the only people that will honestly tell you that it is a real thing are children yet to differentiate fact from fiction. Why do I even bother? End log. Similar testimonies have been extracted from other native guides, as these contradict well-known reputable sources regarding SCP-7565 they have been dismissed. Investigations on SCP-7565 are still ongoing. 
the 3rd of June the 5th of November 1901. Initial incursion into the Congo Basin was delayed by non-cooperative authorities from the Free State. For upon finally entering the territory the European explorers contracted as guides managed to lead the combined forces of the Foundation and Kpa towards recently discovered Katanga, a particularly heavy raining season and multiple malarious outbreaks forced it to return home before any discovery was made. No sightings of SCP-7565 took place. The 12th of January, 1903 The 2nd of February, 1905. Three Belgian guides were hired for the mission. The area surrounding Lake Maru was reached quickly, just a few weeks into the expedition, and from it multiple exploration teams would originate. Despite initial success, the aggressive fauna of the region was a constant issue, with many expedition members being greatly injured by constant attacks of leopards and crocodiles. The death of the lead researcher and two of the hired guides by a thaumaturgical accident put a final nail in the coffin of the expedition, with most of its members returning to sites under foundation control. Cave paintings interpreted as depicting SCP-7565 were discovered. A way was established during the mission's duration, and would be employed for the next three expeditions. The 5th of May the 7th of June, 1906. The expedition had to retreat soon after starting. Native peoples near Lake Bangwulu became hostile after the British guide, fluent in TWA and Lingala, threatened them with murder, slavery and cannibalism. In the attempt to flee, the guide would get lost and died of dehydration. His soul would later be contacted by a Foundation spiritist, and he would claim this whole incident was just an accident. No sightings of SCP-7565 took place as the expedition members were too occupied fleeing the area. The 23rd of September, 1906 The 11th of March, 1907. Cordial relationships were re-established with the local populace. Exploration took place in areas of known para-ecological significance. The expedition would eventually return as the supplies lowered below the designated safety threshold. Many of the expedition members mentioned seeing SCP-7565, though the local population seemed unwilling to share information related to the anomaly. The 16th of November, 1907 March, 1909. A repeat of the aims of the previous expedition with heightened supplies and the help of a multinational team of guides. There was a high attrition rate as a result of diseases. Sightings of SCP-7565 